Okay. All right. Welcome back to our second um, lecture on BC212 Christian Apologetics. We're going to go into our next lesson, uh, lesson number five, which is, let me share this. We want to answer some common questions about the creation account in the Bible. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on Genesis chapter one and two. Right. So um, I think it'll be useful to just read Genesis chapters one and two. I, I think I'm sure all of us have read it before, uh, but just to quickly refresh our mind on Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and then we're going to answer some common questions on you know how are we supposed to understand Genesis 1 and 2 and what are some of the uh, ideas or theories that uh, that you know people have put out there and what is our response okay so I will um, is it okay if I read it first so I'll go through <laughs> Genesis chapter one and two. Right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was, it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. So it's like dividing the earth from the sky above. Then God said, let the waters, verse 9, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So seas came in. Verse 10, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. So third day. Earth separated from the water, seas formed, and the earth producing vegetation. Day 3. Verse 14. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons, for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and then over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So fourth day, that is this whole what we would refer to as the solar system set up, you know, the earth, the light, sun, the moon, all that set up for today. Then God said, let the waters abound with, uh, with an abundance of living creatures, and the birds fly above the earth, across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures, every living thing that moves, which was uh, with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful multiply fill the waters in the seas and bird let the birds multiply on the earth 
So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So fifth day, sea creatures, birds, all those creatures, animals and birds. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creature according to its kind, cattle, creeping things, beasts of the earth according to its kind. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. God said it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, or the cattle over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, or the birds of the air, and every, li and every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see... I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food, and also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So sixth day, finally, all the animals, and then man. Right? And... God said everything was good. Okay, So this is the order in which the creation account in the Bible is given. Right? Chapter 2 is kind of a, okay, let me go back to and tell you exactly how what happened on the sixth day. How what happened. It's like a reflection. Zooming in. Okay, So chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God end ended his work, which he had done. He rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. So now he's going back. Verse 4 is going back. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had, ca had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And then he's giving us details of what happened on day six. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there, so remember, the vegetation happened on day three. Right? In that vegetation, this is what happened. He's giving us some details of what, 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 what took place in chapter one. And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedillium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hedekel. It is the one which goes around east of Assyria. The fourth is Euphrates. That the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Out of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in, that, for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I'll make him a helper compa comparable to him. So he did the same thing. Out of the ground of the Lord, out of the, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. He slept. He took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman. He brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. 
she should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay? So, there are lots of questions. that. So, this is the creation account, Bible account. This is how everything came into existence. Now, there are a lot of questions that obviously come up, which we will try to address one after the other. But I want to point one thing. Point out one thing. Man, all the creatures were formed out of the ground. Out of the ground. So you see, uh, verse 7, Genesis 2, 7, The Lord God fam formed man out of the dust of the ground. Also, Genesis 2.19, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast, every bird, and he brought them to Adam. So every creature, every living creature, animals, sea creatures, birds, and man, were assembled out of the ground, the earth. The starting materials was there. Okay. I'm just pointing it out because um, when we do carbon dating, uh, when, um, when scientists do carbon dating, say, hey, this skeleton is so many millions of years old. Okay. Every creature was formed from the ground of the earth. And when what we are saying is the earth when the earth, when when the heavens and the earth were created god compressed time we said earlier god compressed time intelligence and power in an instant that means what according to our measurement would take millions of years he compressed it in a second And out of the dust of the earth, these creatures were formed. So when we are measured, doing the creature, we are doing studying the bone and say, hey, this is so many years old or whatever. Ultimately, that creature was formed from the dust of the earth. So we don't know. God compressed time. He compressed things uh, in an instant. And then from there he formed uh, all these other creatures. Okay, but let us go through these questions one by one. And these are questions that people ask to, you know, to help us and challenge. Sometimes they ask us, so you know, to challenge the biblical account and so on. So let's look at some of these questions. Question one: Scientifically, the Earth and the universe are billions of years. How do we respond to that from a biblical perspective? Right? So people are saying, hey, this universe is 14. Of course, this calculation changes. Sometimes, you know, in the past, it used to be a few million years old. Then it changed to billions. And now it's eventually now, okay, where it stands is, scientists say, the universe is 14 billion years old, according to their calculation. Again, it's only a calculation. Nobody knows. Nobody's been living that long to tell us. It's a calculation based on various things that they observe, ah, the universe is 14 billion years old. Okay. Bible is saying, according to Bible chronology, Genesis 1-1 may have happened sometime around 6,000 years ago. So you're going back from Adam, Adam's, you know, cal you know, calculating Adam, all the lineage to Abraham and so on till now, approximately 6,000 years old. So what is this? Universe is 14 billion years old. Bible is saying this is only about 6,000. Big difference. How do we reconcile the two? So our response is simply that in the creative act of God, energy, matter, and space, it's all compressed in an instant. 
I mean, what God, what what we think would have taken millions of years, God did it in an instant. That's why He's God. So it's not a problem for us, you know. So like we said earlier, you know, in the beginning, after God formed Adam, so okay, tell me how old He is. And he said, oh, he must be 25, 30. I don't know what he looked like at that time. We would have given some age in our estimate. God said, no, just two seconds ago, I breathed into his nostrils. He became a living person. Two seconds. He's only two seconds old. You're saying 25 years, or whatever age that must be, 40 years. Whatever Adam looked like, anyway. He was, Adam was not formed like a baby, right? He was formed as a man, a grown man. In an instant, he breathed. So in our understanding, that man may have taken, say, 30 years. But God just breathed, and in an instant, a 30-year-old man, I'm just saying 30-year example, whatever that age was, was created, came into existence from what? Dust. So if God could compress Dying like that in a second, if he can compress 30 years in a second, it's nothing to him to compress millions of years or what we would say billions of years into a second. It's only from our calculation it is something. By 30 years or billion of years, what is our calculation, our thinking. But for God, is like, hey, I just did it. Okay. So, the whatever calculation people come up with when they say earth is 4 billion years old universe is 14 billion years old hey okay, that's a number you've come up with you can't prove it but for us we just believe god did it in an instant what you think would have taken so much time okay next question is and this is a Complicated question. And it, this is even a question among the church, within the church itself. These six days we read about in Genesis 1, are they actual 24 hour days? Or can we say every day is representing some millions of years? Question. Because uh, scientists are saying it took so many millions of years, billions of years. If, what if we say every every day mentioned in Genesis, you know, give it some number, you know, every day is 10 million years, so you have 60 million years, or every year, every day is 1 billion years, you have 6 billion years, something you give it. And some people have even, you know, I'm talking about even Christian scientists have, uh, some have, you know, given each day its own, Duration and all. Thank you. So it sometimes it is very confusing because these are believers, Christian. They believe in Jesus, but they're using their science to modify each day. But then we are confused. You know, it causes a lot of confusion. How do we respond to it? So um, so there are three typical theories that have come out of, uh, that people use to try to explain Genesis 1. And I'm, I've just put it here too, so that we can address it. Don't go and preach this on Sunday morning. <laughs> this is not for Sunday morning sermon. <laughs> You'll confuse the whole congregation. This is, only <laughs> this is only for you know our understanding and discussion and if there are questions. So there is what is known as a gap theory. Then there is a day theory, and then there is something called theistic evolution. You know, we will explain what these things are. So what is the gap theory? The gap theory is, if you look at Genesis 1.1 and Genesis 1.2, uh, Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So he said, in the beginning, he created the heavens, which is this universe. And he created the earth. Then verse 2. And it says, The earth was without form and void. There was darkness on the waters. 
and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So what is the condition of the earth? Earth is uh, covered by water. But it is in darkness. There's no light yet. Uh, so, verse 1, God created this vast expanse we call space. And there was the earth. And the earth was in darkness. Now, when it says he created the vast expanse, the heavens, eh, were there anything there? Like, were other planets there? Maybe. You know, it's not telling us detail that because it says in verse 2, uh, sorry, verse 1, heavens and the earth. So, planet earth is created. So, if planet earth was created, did God also create all the other planets at that time in verse 1? Did he also create all the other stars in verse 1? Uh, were all the other stars very far away from the earth that the earth was still in darkness? Because later on, on day 4, is when he creates the solar system, the sun and the moon, that's closer to the earth. We don't know, but the fact that he says in verse 1, heavens and earth, we can think that, yeah, he created all the other planets, all the other stars, and they're all there. The space was there, and earth was there. But earth was in darkness, verse 2. What people say, the gap theory is, between verse 1 and verse 2, there was uh, an unknown number of uh, millions of millions of billions of years. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 1 1 could have happened 14, example, 14 billion years ago. He created the heavens, the vast expanse, space, about, about 14 billion years. And then after a big gap, he created the earth. And the earth had a what was known as a pre-Adamic world. That means there were animals and all those over there. And then he destroyed all of that. And that's why in verse 2, the earth is covered with water. So this is only a theory. You can't prove it. Okay. It's called a gap theory. Sir. So uh, Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, the way people explain it is they introduce a big gap. It is not there. Like, you know, you read these verses, it's not there. So that's why you're saying it's a theory. That means they are, you're introducing an idea, which is, you can't see it here. Genesis 1, 1, Genesis 1, 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. It was covered with water. And it was dark. And the Holy Spirit was moving on the water. That is what it's saying. And remember, it was not written in verse and chapter and verse. So we have to read it together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and was empty. It was dark and water covered the earth and the Holy Spirit moved on the water. These are two verses. This gap theory is, it, it introduces a gap, the idea of a gap. Why? Because science is saying the heavens are 14 billion years old. Earth is 4 billion years old. Where is 10 billion years? Ah, it's in the gap. <laughs> Okay. See, it's a theory. You can't prove it, right? And they say, see, some animal's bones that we are doing now, it is uh, so many millions of years. Where did it come from? Okay, I'll give another theory that in the gap, there, were, there was life 
on the earth. That's why in verse 2, the earth is without form and void. Yeah, there's water. Like Noah's flood, this was a pre-Adamic flood that destroyed life before that. See, it's only a theory. But sadly, it's from the church. It's you know, in the church, you'll hear some people. Sometimes they'll write books on it, whatever. But it's called gap theory. It is an attempt to answer two things. It is an attempt to respond to the fact that the universe is 14 billion years, Earth is 4 billion years. But what happened? Why is there that? It is an attempt to answer that. And it is an attempt to respond to um, fossil fossils of, example, dinosaurs or things that are, so this is 2 million years old, this is so many million years old. It is an attempt to answer to that. You understand where it's coming from, right? So, but it is only a theory. We don't see it explained in scripture. Like you don't find Jesus saying, yes, as Moses wrote, <laughs> there was this time between. You don't find Jesus, anybody telling us about that. Right? So, uh, that's why I say here, there is no scriptural evidence to be stated. Maybe they might pull out one scripture from... I think usually they use a scripture from Jeremiah. I think it's Jeremiah 9. They'll say, yeah. Uh, and also, I just don't remember this exact verse. And when you listen to some of these ideas, um, I forget which verse they try to use. Um, if, Nice, sorry, uh, what? Verse 4. 9 verse? 12. Oh, I'm not actually sure. Uh, one minute, I'm not actually sure. Yeah, and anyway, they, they um, generally they try to use one verse from Jeremiah and uh, also uh, they talk about uh, Satan, Lucifer being thrown and walk, walking on the earth and so on. Maybe it says is equal nine, is it? Yeah. Anyway, so um, you can tell I don't pay too much attention to that, but uh, yeah. So yeah, from Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, they try to use that and say, yeah, you know, Satan was walking on the earth before Adam came, all those things. Uh, but it really is, there is no substantial support in scripture of a gap between the heavens being created and the earth being created and, um, you know, a, a pre-Adamic world, you know, it's, there's no substantial evidence. Uh, in scripture and so on. But just to know that, okay, this is a theory, it's going on, some, some people might, you might find it in some places in the in the Christian world. The second theory is what was called a day theory, and this is even more confusing because uh, some scientists, some well-known scientists, like I, I think Hugh Ross, is, is a very good man, he's a very good scientist, very respected scientist, Christian, but he pushes this theory a lot. And uh, are there many others who push this theory, which is that the day that is spoken of in Genesis 1 is actually, it could be millions or billions of years. And it is not a literal 24-hour day. <coughs> The reason, of course, uh, it starts off with Second Peter 3.8, where in Second Peter writes, he says, For with God, one day is like a thousand years, and thousand years is like one day. So it starts from there, from where it goes to billions of years. 
Peter didn't say with the Lord is one day is like a billion years. and He didn't say that. He was just saying basically uh, in the context of 2 Peter 3, time doesn't matter to God. That's the idea, right? Uh, that, you know, it, it matters to us. We are saying why it's taking so long for Jesus to come. But for God, that doesn't matter, right? But it starts from there and then they expand uh, each day uh, in Genesis to many billions of years, right? But let's look at this. So I'm on page uh, 21. Uh, let's look at this day theory and what, what would, you know, actually if we, Except the day theory, then everything else in scripture becomes uh, many other things in scripture become very absurd. Because, see, one thing what is we must be consistent in what we say. Right? If you say we can't say only in Genesis one day is billions of years, after that it became 24 hours. No, okay. If you're saying day in Genesis one is billions of years, then day everywhere else must also be billions of years. If you're using that same logic, right? But let's look at it. So in Genesis 1 5, he's clearly saying the light is called day, darkness is called night. And then he says, evening and morning. Evening and morning. So it's repeated many times in Genesis 1. The evening and the morning. That means evening, starting from 6 o'clock, evening, and the morning, going through the rest of the day, it is, it is called day. Right? So when God is saying evening and morning is called day, and that, that thought is held uh, consistent everywhere else. Okay. Uh, because that same word, Hebrew word yom, okay, the, the day that is used for day, is, is used 2611 times in scripture. Same word, day, yom, Hebrew word, yom, that is used in Genesis 1 1, that is described as evening and morning. So yom is evening and morning. So 24 hour period starting from evening till next day evening. 24 hour period Yom. And Yom is used like that everywhere else in the Old Testament. So Yom means evening and morning, one day. It is understood like that. Clear. No doubt. But if you say no, 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 Yom is billions of years, then suddenly Yom everywhere else becomes billions of years. It becomes very Absurd example. Right. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, Exodus 31, it says, God made the heavens and the earth in six days. If these six days were millions and billions of years, then he says, on the seventh day you rest. That means you rest for some billion years. <laughs> See, God is putting a command. Okay? Exodus 20 says, you must keep the Sabbath holy. The seventh day, you must keep it holy. Because God worked in six days. He rested on the seventh day. So you also must rest on the seventh day. Okay. Now, if you say God worked six days and you make each one of those days billions of years, that means we are saying when God rested, he rested for billions of years. And then he's telling you and me, you rest for billions of See, it is immediately throws this simple thing, simple thing. Because if you say yom, evening and morning, 24 hour day, six days, yom. Seventh day, Yom, God rested. Six days, if each day is some billions of years, God rested for billions of years. You have to make seventh day also like the other six days. Then God is giving us a command. You also must rest every seven day. 
then that seven days has become billions of years. Doesn't doesn't add up. The logic is gone. So one is simple example, right? Where uh, it, it just uh, things, right? Then if you say uh, you know that everything took billions of years. Then each and every step, you know, in Genesis 1 uh, was billions of years. That means when God said, let the waters come and the land come, it took billions. When God said, let the waters separate from the earth, God said, but it took billions of years for it to happen. Slowly the water moved. <laughs> And the seas came and the earth came. What will you think about this God? <laughs> he said, let the waters separate and the land be formed. And you're saying it took billions of years for that to happen. What kind of a God? How much energy he has? <laughs> How much power? So, it's not adding up. It doesn't make sense. That, and then when God said, you know, uh, day four, let the earth produce, uh, sorry, day three was the separation and the vegetation. Let the earth bring forth vegetation. It took billions of years for the grass to grow. Today we grow it in a few days. <laughs> that time it took billions of years. Trees grow in a few years. And you're saying in Genesis, the third day, it took billions of years for the trees, plants to grow. What is this? It doesn't hold. Not, you know, it's not consistent. Same thing if you go to day five and day six, land creatures, you know, and Adam on day seven, uh, day six, uh, God took so many years. So if day six was billions of years, by the time God made Eve, Adam was, I don't know how many billion years old. <laughs> Not this hundred. Because he had to make Adam. After that only he made Eve later on. Then by the time Eve came, he saw Adam. <laughs> Adam was already billion years old. It doesn't match. But we know, you know, Adam was uh, about 130 years old when he had his son Seth and so on. So that detail is given to us. So this making that one day, whatever, how many thousand years or million years you make it, it just doesn't hold when you look at other implications. Yeah, Anand. When we see in the scriptures only about this first chapter, there will be coming so many doubts. Actually, when we see this uh, day and night also, uh, the light and the darkness will actually measure this time by mm. the sun and moon. Mm. Like uh, if sun is also a star. Yes. So in the starting only, we can see this, the, let there be, will be light. And uh, and God saw the light; it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Yeah. So after that, it will it will it will say like so: the evening and the morning were the first day. Yeah. So when we when we think this, when this light He created this light, it 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 is in thirteenth verse. Like how come it actually happened this day? How can we counted the day without the sun and moon? Mm. Like actually now only uh, we we counting this time according to the sun and moon, the day, evening, one day and the second day. How come it, it actually calculated uh, day before this light? We'll come to that question. Good question. Yeah. So we'll come. It is one of those questions that we have listed. It's a very valid question. We'll, we'll finish this and we'll come to that. Okay. So it is one of those questions from Genesis, which we will answer. Uh, considering that uh, we are taking a day as a literal day, mm. um, so are we? It is applicable 
throughout the bible right? throughout the bible throughout yes. the bible so uh, in genesis uh, third chapter when the mm. fall is happening so uh, it says that now the serpent was more crafty than mm. any then mm. serpent came and you know deceived eve um so what is the time frame we would say because seventh day was sabbath everything was created and god has uh, given in charge of all the garden to eden and sorry adam and right. eve mm. to do their uh, thing so then when this serpent came into the picture is it like uh, uh, because if we consider that a uh, satan was you know uh, cast out of the heaven mm. before the creation mm. it should be somewhere i don't know where it is mm, mm, mm. <laughs> some middle layer somewhere or mm. somewhere it is and then when the creation happened maybe i'm just assuming mm. this i'm not sure about the theory about it so it came on to the earth mm. and trying to deceive the creation of god mm. so is it like after immediately the seventh day of creation it happened or uh, i heard a theory or just some perspectives of um okay every day say when you know they used to till the garden and they used to uh, do stuff satan used to come as a serpent and then used to try to put this idea in the mind of eve mm. so it took uh, some time for eve to believe what satan is trying to tell her and then she took a decision of eating the fruit mm. so i'm not sure is it like uh, if you're taking considering day as a day like mm. 24 hours mm. so it's like happened immediately because it is mentioned immediately after the creation or there is something else mm. to it so the answer is we don't know when <laughs> when you know how many days elapsed like how many days did adam and eve enjoy the garden of eden before the fall we don't know right uh, it's not given to us god didn't say on the 275th day the <laughs> devil came uh, as a serpent we don't it is recorded for us but time it's not mentioned for us right so it tells us okay when 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 god formed man out of the dust of the earth he blessed him but in blessing him he blessed adam uh, both of them he blessed man and woman but we know that uh there was some time gap meaning god had brought all the animals to adam and he named every one of them and still he was lonely so how many days did that take or did it take just one hour I, we don't know and uh, he was still not sad you know he didn't feel complete so he made him you know a deep sleep come and then he formed adam now did that happen on you know day 8 or day 9 or when exactly we don't know and then how many days did adam and eve enjoy the garden before you know they sin we don't know and then this nice story that the devil came for so many days and <laughs> tempted eve which is it's, it's a made up story it's not in the bible the bible doesn't say and satan used to visit eve very regularly <laughs> it doesn't say that so it's a made up story right we can't prove it we can't disprove it because it's not there so best is to avoid that you know avoid it we just said we don't know the exact time but sometime there it happens that adam and eve sins right but what we know is there was repercussions they were sent out of the garden and so on those things we know pastor if in that case uh, in uh, genesis chapter 2 verse number 19 when we see that uh, lord has formed out all the wild animals and he brought them to the man to yeah. see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creatures that was the name mm. so the man gave all the names to all the livestock mm. or the birds in the sky and all the wild animals so when when uh, when you are mentioning that uh, we don't know how much time it took for adam to name all the animals of the earth and the birds in the sky creatures in the water and you know yeah so it could have happened in an instant meaning 
his mind could have been so good <laughs> or it could have taken days i don't we don't know but if we are uh, believing in day as like 24 hours yes uh, so so this could have not been in that framework of 24 hours right it is out of the creation yeah as so the time happened. is passing by uh, but god created uh, eve after that yes so this doesn't come under the seven not, day of not within the yeah seven happen. day of creation correct so this didn't happen in those six days six days it didn't happen it's, it's happening after that later. so he created everything he created adam uh, he rested and then subsequently this happened like okay. god is bringing you know god is letting adam now exercise his dominion on the earth and the first thing uh, as exercise of his dominion is adam all these animals are under your charge what you name you give them that's what they will be and so he does it now again we don't know how long but i'm just thinking that it must have been again a very in instant thing where the mind of man at that time see today we are in actually you know we are not in the same state that adam was in the garden he was in a you know in a, in a, in a much glorious state before the fall so i'm just thinking that maybe his mind was so sharp because when we think of how what our mind will be once we are glorified he says paul writes you know he says we will know even as we are known that means we will know so we will know everything you know first corinthians 13 so our mind is going to be in a very different level at that time so i'm just thinking that in that state before the fall adam's mind must have been in some some different state where he could have done this you know um, very 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 quickly maybe even in an instant i we don't know and then even after doing that god saw he's not happy he's alone then he formed eve so this happened outside of that six days okay okay so we'll move forward okay so let's just look at this third theory which is theistic this is c a b c so first theory was the gap theory they're introducing a gap between heavens and the earth second theory is that you know maybe every day was not just a 24 hour day uh, it was it could be millions billions thousands years of years uh, we're saying it doesn't hold up because if you say yom one day evening and morning was more than 24 hours then it disrupts a lot of other things that where yom is used i may get a few examples the third theory is that and again this is within the christian community that some people believe so again they are they're making an effort to accept evolution and accept god so what they're saying is a guided evolution that means god created the initial life form and then he just let it evolve over time so god is responsible for creating the first life and then he stood back he went to sleep and just let it evolve so they're trying to make both sides happy so it is called theistic evolution a form of guided evolution or intelligent evolution and there are some christians who believe that but that is not what the bible says the bible is saying god spoke it happened it didn't say god slept and it happened <laughs> God spoke and it happens. When he said, let the earth give vegetation, it came. And he said, let the sea have creatures and birds have, uh, the, there be birds in the air, it happened. So it's not in any way indicating some sort of a guided evolution. Genesis chapter 1, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in there. But sadly, it's, uh, you know, some parts of the church uh, accept that and uh, believe it and so uh, we just need to know that these are these three theories so on um, pastor uh, yeah. if the evolution itself states that uh, there is a transformation of stages of life happening on the earth or uh, i mean darwin evolution uh -huh, states yeah. differently but uh, uh, if we see the actual form god has created mm -hmm. uh, during the 
seven days, days of creation mm-hmm. um i don't know if are those really the animals present right now or uh, there are different forms of the same species present right now if it applies to the birds and trees and you know all the creation so what do we call this like this progressive thing that happened yeah, so god you know told he set the biological process in place meaning you multiply you increase and so on so obviously uh that process is still going on and in that process we understand uh, it gives rise to variations mm-hmm. like new new kinds of you know creatures all creatures do get extinct so even now we are aware you know some animals are on the risk of going extinct that is because of you know what the environmental factors that are involved so new variations are being formed and uh, certain variations are going extinct that is fine that is something we observe and that is not wrong okay let's pause here question 3 is what 3 um, and 4 is what anand had asked we will pick it up from there and uh, go so time is up actually okay i'm sorry online um uh, we didn't have time to take your questions online um, okay so nina uh, i'm sorry we will pick up your question from next week i'll copy it and uh, just uh, remind us uh, you can paste it again next week and we will pick that up okay um sorry we time is up okay let's just pray and close and father we thank you for the time today for all the discussions for all the interactions uh, help us to continue to learn and uh, teach us and establish us in truth in jesus name Amen. Yeah, thank you everyone. We'll uh, definitely pick up questions next week and continue.